Hello. 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 Can you hear me? Uh, just about, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Turn him up a bit. Can you, you, can you see me? No. I can't. I can't see you guys. I don't have your video on. One minute. It won't be long. Front camera. There. How's that? There's All right. Camera. Hello there. Can you guys see me well? Yeah, yeah. See you. Let's give him more volume. He's on full. He's on full, huh? Uh-oh. Cool. Well, we'll see. how you got? Okay. Here, let me, just in case, I'm going to, I'm going to start a recording device here, just in case my uh, online recording doesn't work. Okay, cool. Uh, well, first off, uh, my name's Randy. Very nice to meet you guys. Uh, Hi, thank, thank you very much for taking the time to speak with me. Um, mm -hmm. Just a, a little bit of background on me real quick. I, uh, I write for Live for Live Music, and um, today... Uh, I actually I have a I have a degree in music business and uh, I write on the side I work in finance but I write for fun on the side I write concert and album reviews um, and it's been an absolute blast I've had a ton of fun doing it and um, it's an it's a great honor to be able to meet you guys and speak with you and get the chance to review the new album so thank you very much for taking okay. the time to speak with me. <laughs> All right. Um, I'm sorry. <laughs> It sounds like a useful new friend. <laughs> well, I, I hope so. I also uh, I manage a local band here in Memphis who uh, who you guys are kind of one of their influences too. So they're they're all extremely jealous that I'm getting to speak with you right now. <laughs> all right, um, yeah, let me turn you up a little bit. So first off, let's uh, let's start off with an obvious one. Um, everyone wants to know uh, where the title of the album came from. Oh. Uh, well, it's the uh, the common thread of our Mayan astrology. So, it's, yeah. We all share the same resonant tone in our Mayan astrology, and one of its descriptions is one of its characteristics is technicians of the sacred, which obviously okay. didn't make us chuckle when we were. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that's, according to that, that's that's what we were told that we were. So. Okay. Not, bad, not a bad title, really. Either. Right. No, I think it. I think it fits very well. One second, I'm gonna turn you up just a little bit more. I think it it, it fits very well. Um, uh, so uh, for 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 those who may not know, can you explain a little bit more about what the the Mayan uh, reading uh, thing means? Uh, well, it's, it's all to do with birth dates. It's like the normal astrology, but it's a lot more specific to the exact day. And um, it was funny because we were just, we've had a lot of people talk to us about it over the years. And one day we were about to go on stage at Glastonbury and this guy got really, really excited about the fact that we hadn't had it done and really, really wanted to do it. <clears throat> and as he did the readings, he got more and more excited. I'm saying that we were both galactic activation portals sent to channel channel love through music to the universe. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Thank you. <laughs> I, I bet you, you're you're probably mind blown. <laughs> yeah, it was funny. It's okay. Yeah, I can get into that. But then we had to jump on stage, on so we couldn't dwell on it. Really, we had to leap on the stage and play a gig. So yeah. Right. No, yes. I, I read that story on your on your press release. I think that's that's awesome. I, I figured. It's funny. Other people would like to hear it as well. So, uh, yeah. Mean, the other thing is we don't really take it too seriously. You know, the Mayan astrology thing's amazing though because it's basically just a little doorway to tell people how truly cosmic they really are. So. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so is that is that why uh, I know the the album artwork is is um, is somewhat based in Mayan aesthetics? Is that is that sort of the reasoning behind that? A little bit. It's more like the aesthetics of what we look outside, what we see outside our studio window, actually. It's more like that. Outside of the temple. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The studio is like a temple. It just doesn't have quite the pillars. No. <laughs> okay. Um, which brings me to a good next question. Where, uh, where was the, uh, the album was recorded entirely in your own studio? Yeah, as, as always, but this time it was slightly different because we were up in the mountains of Colorado, which uh, was a different kind of energy there, you know? Yeah. Uh, very, very clean and clear and, and uh, untroubled, basically. Nobody comes around, nobody pops in. You see the occasional mountain lion or a bear or a hummingbird, but no people, so we were free to write, like, really space off and do that one. 
Lots of deer. Yeah, yeah. All <laughs> kinds of creatures, but not so many people. So. But just with this traffic, there's been no traffic the whole time. It's been really quiet here, and now that you're on the sky, it's like this traffic jam that's just happened right next to Oh, it's rush hour. Yeah, that that must be weird being back in London where everything's so busy now. <laughs> yeah, that's strange. Yeah, a little bit of a contrast there. That's, that's right. right. My my wife is actually from Surrey, and so oh, I yeah, so I've I've been to London a few times to visit, and uh, I, I it, the traffic just just boggles my mind. <laughs> it's a place. It's a very busy place for sure. Yeah. Yes, definitely. Okay. Um, so, uh, Technicians of the Sacred is your first double album since. Earthland. That's right. Twenty years ago or so, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so my question: what, what made you decide to make this one a, a double album? Well, all the tunes we had wouldn't squeeze onto one, basically. You know? Okay, so it was just a length issue. Yeah. Also, it's been a little while since we made another. We normally do like one a year, roughly. Right. Uh, this was like three years. So our more... schedule got a bit screwed up on this one, and yeah. we we just kind of kept doing things. Even despite not really having a studio. I don't know if you heard about the fire. I did hear about that, yeah. yeah. So that kind of really messed up our normal schedule studio times. And we, he was still making tracks. In We moved about four times after that. And he was kind of putting little bits together in different areas. And I guess we didn't realize how much we had going throughout the yeah, shifts yeah, yeah. of stuff until we suddenly went to put it all together and we go, well, I want that one on there and that one's got to go on there and I want to put that one on there and, oh, there's that one and really we should put that one on there and it just kind of kept going until it was suddenly like 90 minutes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah all of a sudden you can't fit it on one. I understand. <laughs> yeah. I understand. Okay. Um, so, th- uh, this particular album... Uh, how did it come about? Did you did you guys say, okay, you know, we haven't made an album in a while, let's sit down and make an album? Or did you sort of have a bunch of tracks in the making and say, hey, you know what, let's get this released? I mean, as, as always, um, there's tracks. I always have about at least five or six tracks on the go at any one time. Um, and so, yeah, no, it was just like gradually they sort of formed together. What was the analogy Alex King used the other day? The sausage... Just yeah, it's like we have a conveyor belt of tracks going out of our house, and occasionally we chop them off into albums. And okay. Yeah, it's almost like, I mean, day-to-day life is, is studio for me, in cups of tea and studio and uh, recording and, and writing and mixing, and that's just what I do all day, every day, you see, so tracks just emerge, whether I like it or not. <laughs> <laughs> I guess if it comes out, you can't help it, right? <laughs> exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, great. Um, which... Brings me to uh, another question. Um, the it, the new album it, it seems to really flow very very uh, uh, consistently. You know, each, you know. I I feel like a, a lot of your music in general sort of does. It flows with each other. But this album in particular, I feel like, really flows from song to song really well. Uh, is, is that something you planned out? Was it sort of like a concept album, or um, not? To, not to start with, but once the tracks started coming together, you know, we uh, yeah, we started thinking, well, this would lead nicely into that one, and then if it goes like that, then we, yeah, there's a little bit of formulation there, but okay. not not originally. Once once there's a little form of, as to what the tracks are doing and what they're going to sound like. I think like. the final, the post production thing. Uh, when we had, once we had the tracks written, mm-hmm. we just weren't happy with certain things until it. The mix, we spent more time on the mix and the drum sounds than usual until everything was a little bit more uniform than it usually is. We've got a wonderful challenge going at the moment that's trying to get them to guess which tracks are the real drummer and which ones aren't. Oh, that's a tough one, actually. (laughs) (laughs) These do get harder with each album because the the, the sounds get closer and closer. And uh, I don't know, I'm, I'm, I'm getting practiced with programming <laughs> right right yeah. well, I just I just feel like in this one in particular I could I could see each song just like not stopping before it goes into the next one right you know? and yeah. that's uh, yeah I, I guess that's your goal right that's what you want oh, yeah, it's like, yeah it's like a journey like a little journey right. was, well, yeah yeah exactly great great um I'm glad okay. you like <laughs> I do no, no, and and the response has been great in the in all the forums online. Uh, you know, I'm involved in the in the Osric's 30 years of oh, yeah. uh, 
yeah, Facebook fun. group, and the the response has been really great. So uh, I'm they not seem, the only one. <laughs> they, they seem happy. Yeah, it's, it makes me happy. Basically. Yeah, that's that's all you can expect, right? <laughs> yeah, and also with a new album, you never know whether it's going to be your one that nobody likes. You know, all I do is make these tunes and hope for the best, and uh, it's been accepted I mean, with a smile. So I'm really happy. Right. About well, especially when your when your career spans you know thirty years, you've got old fans, new fans, and sometimes they yep. want different things, and so it's really hard. It can be really hard to please everyone, I'm sure. Yeah, I mean it's quite cool because a lot of bands have problems with their second album. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so we're happily doing second album. So we're happily doing our thirty second album, and uh, <laughs> that's all good. Yeah. Happy, happy. The dreaded right. second right. album right. syndrome. Yeah. People spend their whole life, you know, getting their first album together, and then suddenly mm-hmm. they have to make a next, a new one in a year. It's always funny seeing how that goes for people. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I understand. Um, okay, so let's see. How about um, so so for me personally, when I listen to Osric's tunes, the the comple- the attention to detail and and maybe it's not as complex as it sounds because you know a lot of the the synthesizer and electronic sounds make it sound extremely uh, complex. But yeah. what w- from a listener's perspective, when I sit there and think, okay, how did this idea spark? Like, what sparked this idea? <laughs> I, I can't even fathom it. So you know, basically, wh- where does that come from? Where where's the spark in something that complex? Well. So that's you're asking a very deep question. There. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, sometimes it's just a sound. Yeah, often in the morning I'll I'll, I'll uh, grab a cup of tea, skin up a joint, sit there with the synthesizer, switch it on, and think, why well, is that coming through? Hey, there's an idea, you know. Mm-hmm. And I'll just start doing that, and then <clears throat> record a little tiny version of that, and then later on I'll hear it and add stuff to it. It's, it's like the tracks almost write themselves, you know. It's weird. Mm-hmm. It's like this, the track is saying... There I may have been a few more that came from altered states this time. Yeah, sure. <laughs> sure, but I mean, that's... Yeah, yeah that's... Nature, that's, nature uh, of the business, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I mean, really, I don't know where it comes from, to be honest. It's just, I, I, I hear a backing track, I imagine something goes over the top, I try and approximate what I hear in my head, and it's never quite the same, but then that'll spark another idea off, and on and on and on it goes, you know? Right. That was gonna be my next question. How, how often do you do you hear the end result and have it sound the same way it was when you first thought of it? Pretty rare, actually. Pretty, pretty rare. rare. Yeah, that one. Yeah, it's pretty rare because the things move on, you know. But there's definitely this thing, like you were saying, that when once you start the track, it, it sort of it, it seems like it tells you musically where it has to go. Okay. Yeah, it's a, it's a very strange thing to try and describe, but yeah, it just feels yeah. like like I, I hate to re- you know like reference it to like traditional harmony and things like that, but there's just a certain once you introduce a key and a scale and a motif, it kind of tells you what embellishments need to happen. Yeah, and, and right. Yeah, so you're, sometimes, so you're sometimes the surprises. Sometimes you, you get grab a synth and you think, I'm going to do that, and then it does something totally different. And you think, okay, well then, okay, we're going in that direction then. Then that sparks a whole right. new world. You know? And the, the, the tricky thing is, when to, the hardest thing is to finish them, these tunes, how to say, right, that's done, finished. You know, it's, it's not easy. It's easy to start them, very, very hard to finish them. That's the same problem I have. The, the record company tells us when we're finished. Okay. We're like, Turn it in now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's the same problem I have. I, I I play a little bit of guitar and I've I've written some tunes on my own, but but none of them are finished. I have I have ideas that I've started and they sound cool, and I'm like, okay. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it used to be that I had 24 channels of tape, mm-hmm. and when it's full, it's full. There you stop. There's nothing yeah, else will right. fit. You know. Now you can grab another 95,000 channels if you want. And, right. uh, it just goes on forever. You know. So it's quite amazing having this limitless universe of music to be able to go as far as you like you know it's quite it's like a red rag to a bull it's like I'm happy with that because I can grab anything from anywhere right. if I need the sound of a anything you can just look find, on, it, find it online and switch plug it in and there you go there's your noise you know any, <laughs> anything I can do anything now 
It's yeah. such a really easier yeah. than when you were in four track. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the luxury of nowadays. Really, the technology has done been so fortunate for musicians mm-hmm. because you can just grab anything and put it. Just anything. That's just <laughs> I've I've heard record companies complain about this though. And they, they said they when they used to get a, a CD in the post, it, it meant that there was a lot of people that had to think it was an incredible thing. It took the band and the management, and then they had to have funding to go into a studio with multiple engineers and all this gear and get it all together. And they said it was it used to be really exciting when they got something in the post, but they say nowadays they get something in the post and they know that just any old guy who with spare time can. I'll have to get that right. Any old guy with spare time can just put it together in his bedroom, and it only only he has to think it's amazing in order yeah. for it to exist. Yeah. That's true. That's true. Yeah. I, I like to say that the, the internet has has has. His, uh, technology has aided musicians who were, would not have been seen before as they can do it themselves, but yeah, also exactly. at the same time, it's saturated the market. There's so many yeah. people that exactly. can do it that it's hard to be seen. Yeah. Here, as a matter of fact, hold on. I'm going to pass you over to Simon. It's Nick <laughs> who oh, used right. to play guitar on the occasional track with Eddie yeah. back yeah. in the day yeah. in the studio yeah. in the early <laughs> tapes and such. <laughs> anyway. <Yeah. laughs> All right. Um, so continuing on with the with the new, I'm sorry to to go. I want to go back to the the album artwork that was done by somebody close to the Osric family. Is that correct? It's, it's not right here. Oh yeah. I can show you. Yeah. Nathan. Nathan, come here. Say hello. <laughs> hello. <laughs> hello. Nice to meet you. I'm Randy. Uh, so, so the album artwork. Uh, uh, tell me a little bit about it. Where does your inspiration come for that? Sorry, well, man, I cannot hear you. Where does your inspiration come from? <laughs> uh, <laughs> he's very dark. You just have to admit the fact that he's very dark. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, try again. Well, it came from, I think, the mountains of Colorado and hanging around <laughs> with those rigs. <laughs> and, yeah, and <laughs> connecting with the universe. <laughs> okay, that's a good answer. I like it. No, it, 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 it definitely gives off that kind of vibe. So, um, all right. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. And you're... you're, uh, <laughs> you're I'm glad you're, you love it. <laughs> Yeah, no, we were happy with that. You know, he was up there while we were recording it. He was kind of in the house and uh, staring out the window, you know, and listening to the music and just getting inspiration from that. It's great. It's nice. Good, good. Um, okay, now I want to I want to talk about some of the names real quick. And oh. this is this is something uh, I'm going to ask you a very general question first, and then we'll go into some more specific ones that I have questions about. Personally. Right. A lot of the stuff that I write is instrumental as well, and okay. I have a lot of trouble naming them. And I'm wondering if you have a specific process for that. No, it's difficult. It's really, 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 really difficult because it's like say, okay, that was three weeks of my life that I did that, and you want me to name it? Now. What the hell am I going to call that? You know? Right. So we have to reach pretty far. And Some of them come really easy. I mean, one of the interesting things is on Cubase that we use for writing computer. That's mm-hmm. the that when you get a new idea, if you want to save it, you have to name it. <laughs> so the naming right. was, comes, it's normally a not a very good name, but it, they, there's a working title there to start with, and sometimes they stick. But in general, I don't know what the hell, I can't really answer that. I, they, it's Switchback was the working title. Yeah. What so else? with Zingbong also. Zingbong was the working title. Yeah. Wow. I can't remember no more than that. High pass. High pass. Yeah. So those were just ones that you said, you know what, i got to save it as something, let's save it as this. And they, and they stuck, yeah. Some okay. Ones, yeah, yeah. Gotcha. And uh, it's just hard, as you know, as you said, you know, it is really hard to name an instrumental tune. Because it can be anything to anybody, that tune. And if you name it... It puts an image to it. Yeah, so sometimes they give an obscure name that doesn't mean anything, like Epiphlioi or something. Right. That, that leaves it wide open, you know. So, uh, it was the working title. It was, yeah. No, it wasn't. No, he called it New, New Ethnic at first, but we always joked that it was a pivot. Yeah, it was a joke, and then it kind of stuck. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
Uh, yeah, that was one of the ones I was going to specifically ask about. Every the uh, I like to uh, I like to go on the threads when I when I do interviews and and yeah. ask fans what they want to know. And everyone was, "What does the piplio mean?" <laughs> okay, well I can tell you, it's something. I, when I was in Greece the other day, I thought I saw a shop with a piplio written above, above it. Okay. In Greek letters, you see, because I can just about decipher what the Greek letters sound like. Um, I think I got it slightly wrong. Because, <laughs> because the locals didn't say it meant anything. They didn't recognize the word at all. So I thought, well, okay, there's a possible title. If it means nothing. Uh, and it would be really funny to be in Greece and have them shouting at Pythio in the crowd. <laughs> That's partly why we call them weird things, you know. Right. So we people have to try and shout the name. That's why I called my cat Aspects. So that my mom had to yell on the porch. She said, the porch, and yell on the cat. <laughs> okay, and, and you said Zing Bong was a working title. Um, what about, uh, I'm, I'm interested, uh, and I'll explain why, I'm interested where Changa Masala came from. <laughs> because I, lo- I looked up Changa, uh, just the yeah. word Changa, and found a lot of different uh, meanings for it. So I'm curious to see what your thoughts are on it. What are well, the different meanings you found? No, I want to hear what you, what you thought <laughs> of that first. <laughs> I want to hear your definitions first. Well, okay, well, it's, uh, all right. It's, it's, uh, there's an Indian dish called chana masala. Obviously. And it was misspelled. Right. <laughs> it was misspelled, yeah. That's okay. <laughs> so it's as easy as that? I don't know anything else, honestly. Changa is a bit like smiling potion. <laughs> okay. Uh, it's hard to specify exactly, but uh, those people who know will know what we're talking about. Right. What's too fun? What's too fun? Well, here's what I found. There's one. It's a South American dance or lifestyle uh, based oh, yeah. in based in Colombia or Venezuela. Okay. Um, it's also uh, an Indian village. Uh, it's a town in Pakistan. Um, it it also is an uh, uh, shorthand for um, Charm and Body Gravity Solver, which is a computer program that has some out of control thing that I don't understand. All right. Um, it's also a restaurant in Istanbul, Turkey. It's a, <laughs> it's a Bandu kingdom, and it's a smokable form of ayahuasca containing DMT. Those are all the definitions that I found of changa. Well, that's so. fantastic. I'm really glad to hear that. Actually. Yeah. So it so could be all of the above. Yeah. All of the above are fine. And masala... All of the above, especially, especially the last one. one. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> that was the one I was pulling for. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so no, the, and, and then... Flagged, we got flagged as inappropriate on Amazon downloads because of the title of Chanda. Oh, really? <laughs> That's pretty funny. Well, now you can say it's just, an, it's just a town in India, you know. Exactly. It's a, yeah, exactly. Software, man. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. It's a restaurant we went to in Istanbul. Yeah. 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 Exactly. There you go. Yeah, yeah. Thank you very much for that's that. That's good. That's useful. <laughs> sure. When people ask, that's a few useful answers. Depending on who they are, we can choose which answer to give. That's great. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so um, moving on to some more general questions about Osrix. Um, does does working, you know, uh, basically three of you are win family members, right? And yeah. so I'm what... Left. what <laughs> hey, so uh, nice. Silas. <laughs> By the way, happy late birthday. It was yesterday, right? What's that? I can't really hear you that well. Your, your birthday was yesterday? It was, yeah. Yeah, happy late birthday. <laughs> oh, thanks a lot, man. <laughs> You're welcome. You're welcome. Um, so basically, what I'd like to know is, does that provide any specific inspiration for you guys when you're writing your sounds? Does that provide like a certain kind of connection or a certain type of... Uh, well, inspiration get, get for all, you. What, you mean getting all spaced out? Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, the family side. <laughs> <laughs> <Sorry, sorry. laughs> <laughs> 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 I forget that it's a family thing in that, I don't know, I mean, the guys in the crew are, we're, we're all very close anyway. But it is a nice thing. It means that, that, well, we all live in the same house, therefore the ideas fly around. Yeah, and the it, town basically lives with us now. <laughs> But it's all in a very casual way, and it's, it's quite nice like that. It doesn't, doesn't feel like work so much. It's like a it's like a way of life, you know, family way of life. It's very, very cool. You started it with your brother. I did, yeah. yeah so it's, it's always been a little bit like that. So it's good. It's good. Yeah. Okay. Which is nice, nice going on tour, because you don't have to leave your family behind. You take them with you, and uh, that helps too, you know. 
Right. Certainly. Um, okay. Last week has gotten so horrible. I'm so sorry about this. It was so nice and serene just before we talked to you. Uh-huh. Can you hear us? <laughs> That's all right. That's all right. I can hear you well enough, and I'm recording, okay. so I'll be able to go back in. And I'm not scribbling down notes, you know. Um, so, uh, speaking of family, I, I feel like from what I've seen in the online forums and people who I've met through uh, our mutual love for Osrix, it seems like even even the fans and the community has become sort of like one big Osrix family. And you've got, you know, you've got side projects and all these things that stem from that beginning. Yeah. And yes. I, 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 mu- I can't imagine that must feel extremely overwhelming to know that you've got this massive community that's just come out of one jam session in 1983. You I know, know. <laughs> I know. It's quite wonderful, actually, yeah. You know, like, but it is like this, you know. So the heat's uh, like, all right, last one. It's the last one. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah, we're in public here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, no, very much like that. Yeah, yeah. Very, very cool. Very cool. Good. Um, so I guess the next thing I wanted to know was what... Uh, what what does it take for a band to have a 30 year career? I know you've gone through lineup changes, so it's not like the exact same band, but still, there's got to be something that that you did right that makes it last for 30 years. Well, I mean, the thing is that I would do it whether it was successful or not. Patience. Uh, right. You have you have to be able to do this whether it makes you money or not. Really. If, if you find yourself very very poor, sometimes, which we do, sometimes the opposite. Uh, you have to be able to take the rough with the smooth a little bit, you know? Right. And it has to be that the music is more important than than wealth, I think, is what it seems to me. And then, because to me, I, it, it keeps me sane whether, whatever I'm doing, you know? So, uh, I just, I'm, I think I'm obsessed by it and uh, <laughs> can't, can't put it down. That's and good. that's kept me going, really, personally. I can't really speak for anybody else, but uh, that's, that's what it is for me. A great incessant need to create music all the time. It's, okay. It's for me, really. Yeah, that's great. I just feel I feel like that you know there are people that have long careers, but they bounce around. You know, they yeah. do one project and they do another, and blah 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 blah. Uh, yeah, luckily enough, our project is, is consists of so many different styles. Anything we want to do, we can do, as long as it has that little smile in it. You know. Um, Therefore, it, it keeps me happy, you know. We can be a reggae band one day and a heavy metal band the next day and a ambient, new age... Then we got asked to here. play Total Metal Festival. I know, why did we say yes? I don't know, I don't know. What to say. I mean, it would be funny, funny to go in there and just rock. Yeah. <laughs> and then go play Infrasound the next day. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, uh, so here's another question for you. You, you touched on technology earlier, yeah. and you know I know in one of the one of the old videos, I think it might have been a video I saw of the Reading Festival in the early '90s or something like yeah. that. You know, you've got and a big analog board for all the synths in, and stuff, and now you've just got a little Novation keyboard. You know, how has that affected your? Uh, your your ability to create and, and put on a show. Well, it's made it a lot easier. Yeah, um, much much easier. And stays in tune. And thankfully, with this Nova <laughs> Supernova, I can get most of the sounds I need in that. You know, okay, they're not exactly the same. A little bit of a compromise. Missed the prophecy, God! I missed the prophecy. Yeah. It's gonna have to come out again. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, they, they, the synths that I have now really take care of all of it. Really, it's like having six of the synths I like best, all in one synth. And right. it's just so much easier for traveling and carrying it around and, and just ease of whatever. Well, in the analog sense, it's so twitchy. <coughs> like, when you go to travel to different countries with different power and different humidity, sometimes they just don't turn on right and s- things stop working immediately and power supplies overheat. And mm-hmm. Yeah, just have something that you know is going to turn on when you arrive at the gig is really helpful. I, I can certainly see how that would be helpful. <laughs> <laughs> um... Okay, here's uh, another one for you. So, to this day, you know, you're still you're still gaining new fans. Um, yeah. You know, even after 30 years, I'm one of them. You know, I, I honestly, two or three years ago, uh, I hadn't heard of Osric Tentacles. You know, I'm, I'm 27, and two or three right. years ago, I hadn't heard of Osric Tentacles, and all of a sudden, it popped up somewhere, whether it was online or, or on Spotify or something like that, yeah. and yeah. it was, boom, there, here's this massive collection of music for me to, yeah. you know, get yeah. lost to. Um, 
Is that something that you guys try to strive for or, sp- or specifically target, or has Osric Tentacles just kind of become this machine that, that keeps burgeoning? I think, yeah, nothing we particularly strive for, really. I think it's just we didn't go away. You know, right. Just, <laughs> we, like so many bands fall by the wayside, we, we kept at it. And, uh, and yeah, and there are new fans popping up every day. You know, some, of, some of the gigs we play have really young children coming to see us and loving it because they've got this thing about attention span thing with children. Because our music has these little it changes and has weird things happening and events occurring and stuff, then kids really like it because it keeps them occupied with the ears. Yeah. Which is, uh, so young and old alike, they all come and uh, enjoy. <laughs> you know? Good, really cool. good. Actually, that, that's a great segue into I want to talk a little bit about your upcoming uh, U.S. gigs. I've noticed... Uh, you're playing with number one, Broccoli Samurai, who is a, a great young uh, band who's doing some really good things. Uh, and then Consider the Source as well is a great, yeah. great young band. Uh, how'd you come across those guys? Is that through the venue, or are these bands that you're already familiar with? Well, we met Broccoli Samurai. Uh, we did a gig in Cleveland actually at the uh, someplace. Beachland Ballroom. The Beachland Ballroom in Cleveland. And they were there as a support band, and we'd normally like sit in the dressing room and let the support band sort of chunder away while we wait to do our set. And we heard them and we thought, wow, that sounds amazing. We jumped out there and really, really enjoyed it, you know, so. They're so nice. And they're really, <laughs> really sweet guys. Sweetest guys, yeah. guys yeah. ever, man. Good, yeah, good. Yeah, so we've had, uh, you know, stayed in contact and ended up doing a few gigs with them. It's really been very fun, and they're always fun to talk to, you know, it's great. They always amaze me every time we do a gig with them. Each time they get better and better and better. And consider the source. I've not met yet, but I've uh, heard them uh, recordings. I really find it, yeah, it's different enough to be well interesting. For me. Yeah, very different. Th- those guys have have uh, some creative minds of their own. That's oh, sure. It's and the a- fact that they call themselves cosmic beings of light from another, from another planet. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know. That sort of rings yeah. familiar. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> good, good, good. Um, okay, so your. Um, your first U.S. gigs coming up are going to be festival gigs. Yeah. And that seems to be, um, you know, Osric sort of got started in a festival, and it sort of seems to be made for the outdoors. Do you find that you, that you have more of a comfort zone in the outdoor festival scene? Yes. Uh, yeah, I mean, I do very much like it. I used to find it completely, like, comfortable. Uh, now I enjoy the inside gigs as well, actually. Okay. But I, th- I think the thing about the, the uncomfortable thing about a festival is you often you don't get a sound on stage and come for the best. We've got a lot of instruments which normally take sort of three hours to sound check, so we have to jump in there and there's, hope for the best, you know? There's so, been a lot of amazing festivals that have been great about letting us have the first day to set up and have everything all checked yeah, out beforehand. Yeah. That was really nice. Like Azora's done that, yeah. and Met's Festival did that, the Finland one, and like. A lot of them have given us the day to sound check and had us open, which is really a really strange thing to open festivals. Yeah. But no, out, outdoors when it works is the best of the lot, really. It's, uh, the sound you get outside is incredible. You've got no echo any walls or anything. You know, it's just a, on a good night, it's magical beyond magic. <laughs> right. Well, that was and my next question was going to be then how do you how do you have to adapt to play an indoor gig? Like for example, you're going straight from uh, Family Roots Fest, I think, to uh, to Cleveland or or, or Pittsburgh yeah. or something like that. You know, how do you then how do you then adapt? You know, obviously you've been doing it for a long time now, so I'm sure you're used to it. But how do you adapt your sound to switch gears from um, that, that I, Do we adapt them? Not especially. No, we we just hope for the best, really. <laughs> well, Close your eyes. Yeah. Well, sometimes change our set around a little bit, play some different tunes. Yeah, depending on who the audience is, for sure. We'll yeah. do a much more electronic thing at Infrasound than we will in Chicago, for yeah. example, where they're going to want more rock mm-hmm. tracks. And we like to cater to the audience. A lot, yeah. And right. For okay. Um, let's see. Where was I there? Can okay. I ask, where, can I ask you where you are at the moment? Where are you? I'm in Memphis, Tennessee. Memphis, wow. Yes, sir. It's Memphis, so Tennessee. Lovely. And I'm I'm up on the 19th. I'm I'm in my office. I work in finance during the day, so I'm in my oh. office up on the 19th floor of a uh, of uh, a building in the right smack dab in the middle of Memphis. So amazing. Right, okay. Good. Yeah. yeah. And I'm yeah. actually I'm actually going to be moving over to the East Coast pretty soon. My wife and I are moving to Baltimore next month. Oh, right. 
Uh, but I've lived in Memphis almost my whole life, so. You don't sound like it. No, <laughs> no, I get that a lot. <laughs> uh, no, I just I, I never really had much of a Southern accent, so. That's um, yeah, <laughs> that's <laughs> that's what my wife says too. <laughs> um, okay, so you guys have been touring in support of uh, the new album for a few weeks now, right? Yep. Uh, how are the new tunes faring uh, live? Have you gotten a pretty good response in a live setting? Well, they're, yeah, they're working well. They're, they're very, very strange to play to start with. But it's so fun, though, compared to the other ones. It does feel like the next level up. Like you've, yeah. You've hit level 10 on your video game. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they're, they're going down. They're actually the, the peaks of the gigs at the moment. Yeah, oh. they're, they're, at the moment. They're, they're three. We do three little sections, so oh. taking up about half an hour's time altogether. And those three are the bits that we look forward to and the audience are enjoying very much. Especially this one called Zen Like Creature. Mm-hmm. One on the album called that. And that's uh, going down very well. Yeah. Good. Good. Glad to hear it. Yeah, that's one of that's one of the longer pieces, right? That's one of the yeah, the the more 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 like a suite almost. <laughs> yeah, a bit of an armchair journey. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's a good way to put it. I like that. <laughs> it's fun to um, the rhythm section. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. All right, so uh, so like I said, I, I I like to go to the fan forums and see if there's specific things that they want to know. And I had a few uh, specific questions that I wanted okay. to ask you that are from the fans. So, right. uh, Osric's fan Neil Price asks, "How do you get those lovely Osric bubble sounds using a Novation Supernova?" He says he's been trying to for a long time and he can't seem to get it right. <laughs> really? Ah, well, look, these these are these are. This is deep knowledge. Um, right. Well, it can be done. Um, it can be done. I don't understand why why it would be a problem. Actually, I find them quite easy on there. Um, I uh, what do I do? I, I get the filter to self oscillate, uh, and then send it through the LFOs. It's like normal, you know, a bit of echo going side to side, and uh, a little bit of taste to do with uh, not making it too wide the modulation so it's subtle you know and uh, keep it varied and uh, hope for the best really every day is a different story with those bubbles you know right um, good luck with that <laughs> <laughs> okay uh, wow that, that's the smallest dog I've ever seen like the back of the leash that's literally that high wow <laughs> um Okay, here's another. This one is this one is actually uh, ha- partially for Natan as well. Uh, Osric's fan. Hold up. Okay. Hang on. Um, Come in. The question for you for a fan. You got fans, man. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So. Okay. Again. Okay. So uh, yeah. Osric's fan Scott Smith asks, did Natan choose the wonderful day front night back idea for the cover art? Or was the band members involved in that decision? One more time, repeat that. It, uh, it, he says, did Natan choose the wonderful uh, day front, night back ideas? It, it, it seems like the front is sort of like daytime and the back cover is sort of like nighttime. Uh, or was that, a, was that just a coincidence? Well, kind of in between. <laughs> no, because we thought about it, uh, thought about it and then I just said, yeah, just was speaking with Ed about this, and we all agree that it might work. Okay. Yeah, because the original, when we talked about it, it wasn't meant to be that. Yeah, there was, was no... It that came back as a yeah. day night thing, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> we did some color shift and said, hey, it looks amazing. In yeah, we actually suddenly liked the back better than the front. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, great. And then um, also, uh, Dick... Uh, Dick Colthard note he noted that it seems like uh, side one of the album sounds lighter and side two seems to be heavier and so it sort of works like split that way where side one is like the day and side two is like the night a little bit I mean it's almost more like side one we're behaving ourselves side two we're not (laughs) okay (laughs) in a way we're taking it to the next step it's a bit like there used to be an amazing thing with vinyl is you've got side one and side two. Side one, you let them say hello. Side two, okay, you've heard side one, now we can go there. And it's a little bit like having that same luxury as with the two sides of vinyl, having the two CDs. Okay. One for day and one for night, if you like, or one for now and one for later, or one for yes and one for no, or one for happy, one for <laughs> very happy, or something <laughs> <else>. <laughs> 
Okay. Um, here's another fan question. Uh, oh, no. Oh, no. There's a policeman. Okay, he's gone. Okay. <laughs> Hide the stash. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> uh, okay, so Osric's fan, Nick uh, Maidley, asks, uh, how much use did the artist get on uh, the new album? I, I assume he, he capitalized artist. Is that a name of one of your old guitars or something, Ed? Or a piece oh. of equipment? Uh, yeah. Oh, right, okay. Well, sadly... <laughs> Sadly, that guitar is falling to pieces now. <laughs> okay. Uh, I was on stage the other day, and uh, I went to plug it in, and instead of uh, a jack plug socket, it had a hole in the guitar. Oh, gosh. And when I was treading all, the, all these components on the ground, crunching them up, I thought, well, that's fallen out of there. Shit. <laughs> um, so I think I did manage to get one little bit on the artist on there, but I can't remember exactly which bit it was. But, okay. yeah. It was, it was its final fling, was that bit there, really, yeah. Yeah, so yeah, that, that was the second part of his question, was has it been sort of sidelined, but I guess if it's fallen apart, then... Yeah, I've had to, I've had, it's on the wall in a place of honor in my studio at the moment, but I've had to retire it, so... Okay, gotcha, gotcha. All right, and um, w- one last thing about uh, from fan questions. A couple of fans have asked about Ed's guitars, uh, yeah. spe- specifically which acoustic guitars you're favoring, uh, right now, and what tunings you use for those on the on the acoustic sections in the album? Ah, okay. Well, um, ooh, there's let me only think. one that he'll deal with. The other ones, he just like I keep buying him acoustic guitars, and he keeps spitting at me and throwing them back. <laughs> I, I did use I've used three acoustics on the album. Yeah. Right. There was a purple ovation. That we got rid of because you hated. But I did use it for the yeah. intro for the epiphany. You liked the sound of it, but you didn't like the way it felt. And then we've got another one, which was... What's this one, which is... I got you a Variax, a Lion 6 Variax. A Lion 6 Variax is what it's called. Which it's is like a physical modeling acoustic. It's not even actually a real acoustic. It's <laughs> an acoustic electric, but... Yeah, you can, like, change it to bass setting or banjo setting or, like, all or kinds sitar of... Or or anything, really. It's, it's quite cool, really. It's quite but, nice for live because it doesn't feed back. But my favorite one is my fairly cheap Yamaha, isn't it? Really? New t- Yamaha APX is the only uh, one he doesn't spit. It's that. the nicest guitar I've ever plugged in, actually. <laughs> and, uh, okay. Yeah. Great. So, and then yeah. it was it was also noted that you seem to have some new ones and new uh, electrics in your live rotation. Uh, uh, can you yeah. tell us a little bit more about that? Oh, well, uh, recently, my before about a week before going on tour this time, I got this one... Which is called a Ibanez E Gen. E, Ibanez E Gen 18, 18, which is um, as designed by Herman Lee from Dragon Force, which is a uh, cool. It's not that he's a Dragon Force fan, but it just happens to do what I mean. Not that Dragon Force is bad, but it's not really my style of thing. But the guitar, right. the specs on the guitar were incredible, and I tried it, and it's just absolutely blown my mind. Really, it's got it's like five different guitars in one. We're trying to work out whether it can actually deal with the sort of aggression Ed puts into his playing, though. Okay. Or whether it's going to crumble. Yeah, we'll see how it gets on. <laughs> it's, it's, um, it's a little bit... It's, it's very thin. It's about a centimetre thick, this body. And wow. uh, I hope it can take the pace, really, because I do tend to throw the thing around on stage, which is great fun and it sounds wonderful. I just hope it can keep up with it. We shall see in a few weeks. <laughs> okay, good, good. All right, well, that's it for fan questions. I've got just a couple more quick ones, and then I'll let you guys enjoy your evening. Uh, So um, you're doing a couple of Node Invictus gigs in in this U.S. run, right? Where where, where are you going to be incorporating that? Well, they're going to be... Was it Infrasound we're doing one? Okay. Um, Which Node Invictus at the moment consists of myself and Silas and Natanz. Actually, all three of us on there. Okay. And uh, we're going to be doing one there, and I think we're doing a couple of others, are we? And uh, Family Roots. Family Roots Festival, where we're doing two of them. We're also doing that radio show on Echo's radio show with John Deliberto. Oh, are we? We're okay. An Invictus set and an Osric set. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Very cool, yeah. So and then we're going to record an album when we get home. Then, so. Oh, that's right. Yeah, we've got one about two-thirds finished, actually. So, <laughs> oh, really? For Nodens? Yeah. That's awesome. Great, so great. Neo- I, I know the fans will be happy about that one. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of neo Nodens. Nodens. 2015 Nodens. Okay. 
like the uh, Natan's put his little thing in there, which you'll notice. Yeah. <laughs> it's up, yeah it's, I'm really excited about it. It's, just, it's a, a lot of fun doing something non Osri, but slightly Osri for me. It's a right. Lot of fun. Well, yeah, it's within the family, so that's exactly, awesome, yeah. certainly. Okay, uh, and finally, uh, actually, well, speaking of Nodens, um, it was mentioned in the in the thread that um, that Brandy hinted at a remastered Grove of Selves in 2016. Is that happening, or I don't know how we'd remaster that it. That will be Niall doing this thing again. Right. Okay. Yeah, yeah, we'll see about that. There's a discussion. Okay. We don't okay. actually have masters. the thing is of Grove of Selves. It's mostly space lines anyway. All the good stuff from Grove of Cells is on Space Line. Yeah, it's true, yeah. So, I, I mean, we could put it out for sentimental purposes. But it's not the number one project in the front of the mind. It's not the number one project. The new, new Newton album is the number one. Right. Right. Okay. Uh, so then, um, aside from the new Noden's album, uh, you know, I know you're probably like, oh, we just finished this big project. Now everyone wants to know what's coming next. But uh, what else, what's what's up in the near future for Osric Tentacles right now? Well, I'll go home. I'll smoke a joint, have a cup of tea, and start <laughs> <laughs> I might sleep for a day, and off we go again. You know? <laughs> it's always in the pipeline. You know. I'm not happy unless I've got three, three or four tracks on the go anyway, so I'll get that going, and then they'll turn into whatever they turn into, and, uh, and then we'll have to name them. <laughs> It'll be funny. All right. Wonderful. Any more, uh, you guys have any more live plans coming up uh, after this quick U.S. tour in the I, summer? I meant to take, well, I meant to take some time out. We had a bit of a hiccup with the new agency we've started working with. Which kind of screwed up a bit of summer plans, and I said I wasn't going to do any festivals this summer, but there's a few offers starting to come in. So okay. We'll see. We'll probably end up out in a couple more. Okay. Well, I hope so. We are going to try and have a little bit of a break, actually. Okay. At some point soon. But so we've tried that for about 15 years now. We haven't had one yet. We'll so. see. <laughs> 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 okay, good. Well, I'm, uh, you know, I, I hope you get a couple more in. Unfortunately, June is a bad time. I was thinking about going up to the Ohio, driving up to Ohio uh, uh-huh. for family roots, but it, that's just not in the cards for me anymore. Yeah. And, uh, I think we're going to be more in your area at this, you know where they do this uh, Mad Summer Meltdown? I think they're doing one called <laughs> Meeting of the Minds in September. Yeah. And I think we'll be at that one. Okay, yeah, that one that one's up in Ohio as well, I think, isn't it? Is it? It's I not at the same Pennsylvania, Scully Hill, Heaven, whatever. Oh, maybe. I'm, I'm. Oh no, it is Pennsylvania. You're right, Scully Hill. Pennsylvania, Hill. probably right. late September. Okay, well then, uh, hopefully I'll be able to make it to that one because I'll be I'll be only a couple hours away from there when I move to Baltimore. So. Right. And I've, I've yet to see an Osri show. It's blowing my mind that I just have not yet That's been so able to great. make it to one. It's just every time I look for tour dates, it's just never quite the right time for me to be able to right. drive. You know, I, I'd happily make the trip to Ohio or Pennsylvania from Memphis, but it's just never the right time. It hasn't worked out. So hopefully I'll get my first one in later this year. Oh, well, I look forward to that. Yeah, well, let us know if you're going to be in Pennsylvania. We have some guest list spaces. We never use them. Okay. I certainly <laughs> will. I certainly will. Would you guys be the ones to contact or your publicist who contacted me? Yeah, feel free to contact us. Okay, great. All right. Well, thank you, guys. I think that that's uh, uh, quite a lot of information. It's going to take me probably... Uh, a whole year to transcribe this thing, but <laughs> uh, no, I'll, I've, I've got I've got most of my review of the album done, so I'm going to finish that up uh, over this weekend, hopefully, and transcribe this interview over the next week or so, and hopefully we can get this published right around when the album is coming out uh, in America, maybe okay. maybe a few days later, uh, okay. but I'll try cool. to get it on track for that. So okay, man. Well, that's been a pleasure. All right, yeah. Thank you guys so much for meeting with me. It's been great. Thank you it's been so a great. Much, Sorry. Take care, then. Thank Bye. you. You too. Bye. Bye. Bye.